All right, thank you very much, sir. Uh, Mr. Wikiman, are you still with us here? Mr. Wiki, are you connected with us? Okay, sir. Uh, so I finally, don't think so. All right, sir. Finally, all right, uh, I would like to bring up the last issue for discussion on this uh, platform. Uh, in reference to the complexities of Nigerian political system, uh, I want to see if uh, there's a possibility that electronic transmission uh, will work better. Although we've seen uh, initially when Beavers came, we all have hopes and aspirations that Beavers uh, will be the last resort to all these issues and discrepancies in politics and in election. But now again, now uh, we still hear the same stories. And like I said, the, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, just as we've had in the previous elections. So I want to say, uh, is there a possibility that if for uh, electronic voting, that these people vote from their home, to so, know mm. to save us from the hassle of uh, the uh, intimidation in the way in the political in the poll station or mm. the distress mm. or okay. so is there a possibility that okay if we go to, if we go by electronic voting system uh will this mm. issue uh, be resolved or it will still reoccur okay yeah thank you i think that's a very interesting uh topic here um, the, the issue of, of voting electronically and voting from home. I, I, would, I would let us know that I think there's only one nation in the world that has thus far implemented that, and I, and I think that's uh, Estonia. And uh, number one, it's a small nation, a uh, relatively homogeneous nation. Uh, they don't have a lot of the tribalism we see uh, in our politics, a lot of the identity issues that we see. And, um, you know, it's relatively advanced nation in, in terms of, you know, the infrastructure that they have per capita. Uh, so all of these uh, things that, just as I mentioned earlier about the transmission with Beavers, all of those infrastructure that they have, you see that the penetration of the internet, for instance, there is actually very high. And, and, and if you look at Nigeria, and most countries in Africa, we, we don't have that much penetration of the internet. Given a lot of people use mobile phones, a lot of people have that, but as I mentioned, the, the base infrastructure that powers all of these, uh, the data centers, the, the, the mobile telecommunications, the connectivities, you know, the fiber internet, broadband internet, all of those things, and, and not uh, readily available. Granted, you know, uh, the minister said on Twitter that, oh, Nigeria has achieved 100% broadband, uh, you know, with the introduction of, uh, you know, Starlink. Think, Technically, yes. that's true, but it's also very expensive. So how many people actually have access to it? So we could have it yeah. theoretically, but, you know, how much of that is actually available uh, for folks? So before we go, you know, the route of having, uh, you know, this electronic voting there, there are a lot of things that we have to think about so the first one is all right yeah so as i was saying i think uh the the uh, when, when we look at uh the uh the the internet pro, pro, proliferation of internet in nigeria i think we still have some ways to go we're probably at this point in the 60 percent range thereabout uh we've not been able to hit uh that threshold i would say before we can do electronic voting and have it as the sole uh, means of voting that we probably want to go uh, to that. Uh, um, so, so as I was saying, there are other things we have to consider, right, before okay. uh, we are able to um, deploy this uh, uh, massively uh, or, or, or on, a, on a wide uh, uh, scale, on a massive yeah. scale. I think we also have to look at the, the idea of uh, identifying folks. Uh, the Beavers uses facial recognition, it also uses fingerprints, so it has that kind of uh, backup. Uh, so if you want to implement something like this, uh, where people will do electronic voting from the comfort of their homes, then you would have to assume that many of them would have the devices uh, to be able to capture their fingerprints. That's also going to be another ob obstacle to go through. Um, and um, with the facial recognition, I think many people would have a camera on their phone that, that is probably going to be doable. Um, but lastly, I, I would say we also have to think about the security uh, implications in, in, in transmission of uh, results and, and actually voting online. I think 
I'm not I'm not suggesting here. I have no evidence to say that uh, this occurred in the last election. But but it's not far fetched to think about uh, a potential of of a hack or, or a coordinated attack on the Beaver system uh, yes. by whatever parties stands to benefit from it. Uh, so yes. uh, so again, I'm not saying uh, there's there's been reported uh, evidence of this, but these are things that could occur. So what happens when everyone starts to use this technology and someone has the ability to basically stand in the middle of that system uh, and, and maybe change the, the, the votes that people have actually imputed? Those are things we have to think about before we, we go down that path. It's actually um, very good to think about it and start to uh, prepare for things like that. Uh, but I think generally in Nigeria, uh, thus far, we are already one of the... Uh, most, uh, uh, you know, uh, adoptive nations when it comes to technology and elections. Um, majority of the world actually still uses the, 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 the manual systems. And perhaps the only parts that they are uh, maybe uh, incorporating technologies is, is just in the, the counting of the ballots. Uh, but when it comes to the voting and all those things, accreditation, all those things, Nigeria actually is one of those countries where we've actually been embracing a lot of technologies. Uh, and I think uh, we've basically given INEC a lot of room to be able to, you know, change uh, their procedures, to be able to introduce different kinds of technologies, Beavers as an example. Um, and in, in previous elections, if you look at it, there's been that incremental uh, push towards uh, using innovative yes. technologies to make our ele elections better. But however, you know, uh, to, to save us the, the stress of having to come to complain about, um, you know, all of these challenges with it, I think there are a lot of things we have to think about ahead of time uh, before we implement this. Uh, the electronic voting, I would say it, it, it's something that if we want to bring on board, uh, it would be beneficial if we could start small and perhaps use it for uh, just a couple of by-elections. Uh, maybe local government type elections or, or, or things like that and 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 try it in a, in a in a small locality and see how it works and um and take the learnings from that and and continue to implement perhaps we could incorporate it to existing methods of voting where people can go to the polling stations and vote and at the same time uh if if, if some people chose to to vote from the comfort of their home then they would be able to to vote i'll, I'll be interested in hearing what our other uh, panelists think of it i think it's going to be important as a as, as the next step to getting folks like like us from diaspora to be able to participate in in in, in elections in nigeria because unfortunately we don't get to be able to vote uh uh in in our, in our countries where we stay and, yes. and and unfortunately, we can also vote in Nigeria, where uh, where where we where we are citizens. So, 